have a sense of human. It's what we're shouting out at the Jeffrey Bean Foundation. It's the DNA of a builder of science, and it embodies the core being of our builder of science honoree, Dr. Roger I. Glass, director of the Fogarty International Center and associate, uh, associate director for international research at the National Institute of Health, the NIH. Good evening. I am eager to share with you Dr. Glass's heartwarming career whose path has blessed so many lives worldwide. So here we go. Under his leadership, Dr. Glass started the Medical Education Partnership Initiative. His program has transformed Africa's medical schools. In short, Dr. Glass built a network of African institutions that leverage resources and collaborate to speed discoveries. In addition, he started emerging epidemic virus research training for the very West African countries that incubate widespread transmission of Ebola. He also greatly expanded the, the Fogarty Scholars and Fellows Program, which provides early career doctors, dentists, engineers, veterinarians, cardiologists, and others with a year or more of mentored research at the NIH-funded site in low-income countries. And finally, Dr. Glass also helped found the Global Alliance for Chronic Diseases to encourage international collaborations to spread, to spread, uh, to speed treatments. An MD, PhD, his experience is in the prevention of gastroenteritis from rotaviruses, noroviruses, and cholera. Dr. Glass is a member of the National Academy of Medicine, and he has co-authored more than 600 research papers and chapters and received numerous prestigious awards and honors, which I'm not naming, because his body of work transcends the scope of those awards. After listening to a lecture he gave at the University of Michigan, Dr. Glass piqued my curiosity, and I made the Mara phone call. And graciously, he shared how his journey as a medical doctor and researcher began. And I want to share a part of his story because it reflects the stamina it takes to be a builder of science. It goes like this. Instead of hanging a shingle on Park Avenue in New York City, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's eight million people. We need doctors on Park Avenue. But Dr. Glass, he answered to a higher calling. His quest for an international scientific career germinated when he was a history of science major. And looking back, he described it as, quote, young, naive, and idealistic undergraduate, close quote. Well, hey, we'll take that since being a young, naive, and idealistic has yielded such remarkable results, which I will detail in a moment. And at the time when he learned about the investigations of cholera in the 1850s in Bangladesh, he was inspired to try to do something about it, about stopping cholera. Later, he went off to Bangladesh in 1979 for four years. While he had gone out to work on cholera and cholera vaccines in Bangladesh, he learned that a bug, rotavirus, that had not been discovered when he had graduated from Harvard Medical School in 1972, was a more common pathogen for deaths and, di and diarrhea disease in Bangladesh than cholera. And he redirected himself and has been working on rotavirus ever since. His research has been targeted towards epidemiologic studies to anticipate the introduction of rotavirus vaccines, leading to the prevention of debilitating gastroenteritis infections. He said his experience in Bangladesh was life-changing. And his research ever since then has been to see how to control diarrhea and pneumonia which is the number one and number two cause of death in children under five worldwide. By quote, taking the science where the problem is, close quote. There you have it, very simple. Taking the science where the problem is. Passionately, he shared with me the impact of conducting scientific research in developing countries and how invest investments there have come back to help Americans here at home. Glass shared lots of examples with me. For instance, oral rehydration therapy, ORT, intravenous rehydration, which was used to prevent deaths from cholera for people living in areas of Bangladesh, which didn't have access to intravenous flu fluids. Now, here's the kicker. 
The intervention, which through about a $10 million investment of U.S. taxpayers' money to prevent deaths from cholera, is now used by every American mother every year to treat children with acute diarrhea. An incredible discovery where investments in global health have come back to help us here at home. This is an investment we will continue to keep giving back. Now, kind of, does it make you feel happy? Does it make you feel good? Yeah. Many incredible related stories can be told how Americans have benefited from the results of global health re research from the Fogarty International Center. For instance, when Ebola swept through West Africa in 2014, clinicians and researchers trained by Fogarty worked to contain the critical epidemic before it had a chance to spread to other regions of the world. Under Dr. Glass's leadership, Fogarty-trained investigators led local efforts against HIV infection, tuberculosis, which, if you recall, was a grave threat to New York City. Well, I certainly remember living and working in, in New York City, and one of our clients came in and told my husband, I'm sorry, but he said, I was just tested, and I have tuberculosis, and you and your wife, we were all at a meeting, and so I'm just informing everybody, you, you better get tested. And I know the, the, the trauma uh, of all those months and then going through another test six months later to make sure we didn't have it. And every time someone coughed, I was like, oh my God. So I, I, I just, uh, when, when I spoke with Dr. Glass and, and learned of all the things he told me, I just was so, uh, I felt so emotional, so emotional. And, and, and then there was, he, and then, and then, well, it, going back to the tuberculosis, it was stopped cold by implementing a simple program developed through interventions observed in India. And efforts against malaria, then Zika, unless you slept through the last couple of years, was front page news for pregnant women in the U.S. and a broad array of other diseases. Uh, and let's not forget cancer viruses and the most threatening and frightening of all, Alzheimer's, the threat of losing our minds. But Fogarty set the stage for trials by supporting the training of Colombian scientists in cutting edge neuroscience research. Bottom line, Dr. Glass has led the core function of Fogarty, which is to train US and international medical students around the world in high quality research. These scientists are on the front lines in the control of our most serious disease threats. It funds more than 500 projects in including involving about 100 American universities. And about 80% of Fogarty International grants go to U.S. universities. And 100% of Fogarty's grants involve U.S. scientists. For Americans, this center is where it's at. Have I exhausted you yet? And I'm only identifying the tip of the iceberg. To suf suffice it to say, the Fogarty International Center is the most leveraged entity at the National Institute of Health. And building science, an institution, is not a hashtag. A few words does not come close to understanding the wealth of research being done in developing countries. And the interventions used are saving lives here in our own country for very little money. It's a win-win for the United States of America. Glass's career path exemplifies a builder of science whose leadership is unstoppable, even in the wake of anemic funding. Why? because he has a conscience. He has a conscience for doing the right thing. He has empathy, tenacity. His leadership reflects the best in the American scientific research community, along with Jeffrey Bean Foundations, rock stars of science, founding scientists, Francis Collins and Anthony Fauci. Working together, the Fogarty International Center, Center is hitting home runs. It's a love fest, folks, saving lives, because hope is where the science is. And if you haven't heard it and understand it by now, this group rocks. I shared with Roger Glass our new campaign at our foundation presented by rock stars of science called Frame This Revelations.
where artists with cancer visiting our Jeffrey Bean Cancer Research Labs share with the world their revelation through their artistic expression of how they feel about what they observed at our labs. So I put the question to Dr. Glass. I said, hey, Dr. Glass, what is your revelation after all these years conducting extensive field studies in India, Bangladesh, Mexico, Brazil, Israel, Russia, China, Vietnam, and elsewhere? Dr. Glass shared his revelation with me. Quote, if you take bright, motivated young people who are in medicine or health and their eyes are open we send about 100 physicians, health practitioners, and medical students per year for mentored research in low-income countries. They come back as different people. They come back with a sense of purpose, a recognition of issues of health equity, a recognition that the training they have can really be useful in saving lives and improving health anywhere they can be challenged. Close quote. Thank you, Dr. Glass. I hope America is listening. Dr. Glass shares his in inspiring life with his wife, Dr. Barbara Stoll, the, w the H. Wayne Hightower Distinguished Professor in the Medical Sciences and Dean of the University of the Texas Medical School at Houston. And Roger is the proud father of three children, Nina, Michael, and Andy, and his grandchild I met tonight, uh, Nathaniel, sitting at our table. He's quite a gentleman. You see, you haven't heard him. He's very quiet. Uh, he's two years old. I mean, that's amazing, right? In closing, Dr. Glass, you have refined, you have redefined an all-encompassing view of the world, embracing all of humanity, being fluent in delivering lectures in five languages, no less, and you play the piano. It doesn't get any better. Without question, you have a sense of human. And in a shared spirit, of Sir Thomas More, who argued repeatedly that a person is defined by their conscience, quote, as one who remains true to themselves and their beliefs while adapting to all circumstances and times despite external pressure. You, Dr. Glass, are America's conscience for doing the right thing. You are our warrior battling diseases in some of the most depressed areas of the world, saving lives here and saving lives here at home, and sometimes at your own peril. Dr. Glass has been fighting for other people's health and what affects other people's health affects when we all die. Dr. Glass, you truly represent a man for all seasons. And it is with humble thanks to your courage and dedication to all of humanity that my husband, Tom Hutton, and I present to you Research America's 2018 Jeffrey Bean Builder of Science Award. Thank you, Mara. <clears throat> what, what passion in your presentation. <clears throat> I wish I could pre <clears throat> recreate that. I, I'm, I'm so honored, Mara, and all of you to be here before you <clears throat> this evening. Uh, and to Tom and, and you both for the generosity and your commitments <clears throat> to this award and to build the next generation of scientists. Mm -hmm.